Hi, it's Mac Gizmo Guy, and today I'm going to talk again about SSDs, solid state disk drives. About six months ago, I had bought a 30 gigabyte, rather small, but very affordable solid state drive as my first experimentation and foray into this new form of disk storage, which instead of having spinning platters and moving parts, is purely based on memory chips. And I uh, just got today this kind of a next generation. Six months later, the technology has advanced insanely rapidly. Perhaps the biggest thing is much better controller chips with more cache storage to speed up these drives has kind of taken them to a completely new performance level in 2009. So while I was very happy with the original OCD solid series drive that I had originally gotten, I did experience intermittent, about the only time when I was trying to work on videos or save videos did I notice that writing to the SSD would get a little sluggish. Otherwise, it performed beautifully. My MacBook would start up fast, I would launch applications fast, and overall it was just the smartest investment I ever made. Well, that was six months ago, and in the world of technology, stuff changes endlessly and rapidly. And so here we have this new OCZ Agility Drive, which is actually at the low end of their drive lineup. They have uh, Vertex and Summit series drives now that are higher level than this. Um, but this is still uh, a quantum leap forward. My old solid series basically wrote at about 90 to 100 megabits per second, and the uh, read speeds on it were about 150 to 170. Well, the specs on this one, the writes are now up to 135, so there's a 35-40% increase there. And then the read speeds are up to 230, so uh, another huge 50% or so leap there. And overall, the performance I'm expecting is going to be just a lot better because there's so much more cash um, on, and an enhanced controller chip that's just going to manage much better than the current or previous generation of drives from 2008 did. Um, on my websites, Mac SSD drives and SSD solid state drives.com, I'm starting to tell people don't buy anything less than this because the technology for solid state storage has changed so dramatically and so rapidly over the last six months that, in a lot of ways, this is the bare minimum drive you'd want to buy. Maybe the bigger issue is some of the drives that had been just discontinued or a previous generation of technology, you can often buy one of these for just for like a 60 gig drive for another 10 or 20 dollars more. You can get dramatically better performance out of a current drive that's been made in 2009. So I'm really narrowing it down. As these become a commodity item and start to use the same controller chips, the same kind of flash chips, the, they're all starting to get much more cash on board in that the performance differences are starting to kind of narrow. They're starting to bump the limits of a SATA 2 drive controller for SATA drives. And it won't be until we have a SATA 3 standard that in a lot of ways solid state drives are going to be able to go to the next level. So an interesting thing has happened in 2009. Tremendous enhancements to speed and performance on these things at the same price points basically. This particular drive was about $190 shipped to my door. So pretty good deal for a 60 gig drive. Um, I'm going to take it out of the packaging here and it's quite minimal. You get a little instruction sheet and the drive itself in here. What's different is um, a lot of these newer drives, especially as we move up to uh, 128, 256, and now 512 gig drives, is that most of them don't include a USB port anymore. And I'm not sure if part of that is because the newer, higher 128, 256, these big drives have so many more chips in it that they just would draw too much power um, from uh, a regular USB port. So, tens, the newer drives that have come out in 2009, anything above 64 gig tends not to have a USB 2.0 port built into it. So what I'm going to be doing in my Apple MacBook here is I'm going to pull out the 30 gig SSD that I currently have in there. I'm going to slide this one in and format it for Mac using 
two things, a GUID partition table for Intel Macs, and then I'll format it as Mac OS Extended um, Journaled. And then I'll use, uh, externally, I'll take and put my old drive into a little case and then clone my old setup, 30 gigs worth, onto this 60 gig drive. After I do that, in another episode, I'm planning on taking an old G5 iMac I have, and I'm going to take that SSD, put it into a 3.5 inch adapter case, so that it's a standard large hard drive format. I'm going to put that in my old uh, G5 I, white G5 iMac here, and I think that's going to breathe a new round of life into that tired old thing, all right? So um, I'm going to cut here. I may come back with a little short segment later. In the meantime, visit my website, mac-ssd-drives.com, and check out the current offerings, and check out my blog, and see what's available in the solid-state drive market. I'm a gizmo guy, right? And I've been dealing with computers for 25 years. I think solid state storage is the most significant advancement to come along in a long time. My first experimental SSD, I honestly feel, was the best hundred bucks that I have ever spent on a gizmo and gadget. And I'm looking forward to slapping this puppy in, copying my setup onto it, and having a faster Mac experience on a tired three-year-old laptop than I've ever had before, all right? Okay, so to begin this transfer process of getting what's on my current Apple MacBook onto this new OCZ drive, I have a little SATA 2 external drive case. I list these on my website. They're dirt cheap. They're only usually about 10 or 12 bucks a piece. There's not much to them. An aluminum case and a little interface controller chip. So I'm not even going to bother kind of screwing this and putting it into the case because this is going to be temporary. I'm going to use it to transfer stuff from my MacBook onto this and then this is eventually going to go into the MacBook. So all you really have to do once you figure out you get it in the right direction is just match up the little connectors here. All right. So now I've attached the interface from this little $12 SATA 2 drive case here, and I'm going to plug USB cables into it. What you'll often see here is that a lot of times, in order to make sure that you have enough power, I mean, one more twist here, um, a lot of these cases come with little double-headed cables. See how there's two on this end? So I'm going to plug both of these into my MacBook's USB ports to make sure I'm getting plenty of voltage and amps from two USB plugs that will be going into the drive here. So I'll cut and take care of that and then I'll come back later, all right? All right, I have just finished cloning my old drive set up onto this drive here and I have to be careful, I am live and booted up off of this. And so after finishing that, I restarted up off this drive. With an Intel Mac, you can boot up over USB in the old days. It had to be Firewire. But the reason I did that, and I haven't rushed, um, that finished up about an hour or two ago, I haven't rushed to swap and put this in yet. I felt it was important that once I finished the clone operation to restart, launch and run my major applications, make sure that everything works smoothly, and allow a Spotlight to rebuild an index. It knows it's on a different drive. And it took quite a while to do that, chugging away in the background. And so I really didn't want to do put the drive in and then suddenly have Spotlight chewing away for 40 minutes, slowing everything down to really kind of uh, confuse my impression of how fast this drive can really be. So here we go. This drive is now ready to go into my MacBook. The one thing I wanted to mention, as easy as it is, in a classic white or black MacBook, you just pop out the battery. There's three screws you loosen to get at the plate where the memory and the hard drive is, and then you just slide out the hard drive. There's a small tray that holds that hard drive that has four screws in it, and you do need a special little Torx tip wrench to loosen the screws and get that metal plate off and refasten it onto the new drive. So that's it. it it's only going to take me about three minutes to do that. The MacBook makes this uh, one of the easiest solid state drive upgrades and one of the most worthwhile upgrades you can do to a MacBook. All right, bye.